GB04, PO Box 8690, Derby DE1 9TT. UK only. Entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close at 5 pm on the 26th of April. Full terms and privacy notice at gbnews.com forward slash win. Please check the closing time if listening or watching on demand. Good luck. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. Offline and overlooked. That's what Age UK say millions of British pensioners are. Why? Because they cannot or won't access the internet. It's leading to digital exclusion. So the charities campaigning for public services like banks, utilities and even the NHS to maintain a more human approach. Everything's online. People assume you've got a smartphone with a, with a mobile number and uh, an email and without that you don't exist in this world anymore. We've got to try and get the government to see that it's so important to make people feel that they belong because there's a, there's a feeling that the older generation just feel that they're forgotten, they're in the way and we already know that anyway, but it's just another reason for them to feel that they're not wanted. They'll just accept it and they'll say, well, that's it, I can't do it anymore. And that's it, whereas other people would be really kicking and screaming. So we need to be the voice for older people. Despite digital technology playing an increasing role in our lives, around one in five over 65s in the UK don't use the internet. Thornycroft Centre in Pontefract, West Yorkshire, provides a space for this age group to socialise and get help to go online. I'm not that good with mobiles, so when you mention anything about online, I ain't a clue what you're talking about. The closure of thousands of banks is also detrimental to the older generation. A lot of our members what come, they tend to use cash. Um, they don't like to use bank cards. I think a lot of it's trust or the lack of knowledge. They don't understand how it works. I think they're very vulnerable as well with online. It's really important that they're aware how to use it and how to use it safely. So, in an online era, it's still crucial for many to have an offline option. Good evening, I'm Sophia Wensler in the GB Newsroom. Your top story this hour. Mark Menzies has announced his resignation from the Tory party, saying he won't be standing at the next election. The filed MP was suspended following claims he used political donations to cover medical expenses and pay off bad people who had locked him in a flat. He disputes the allegations. Following an investigation, the Conservative Party says it can't conclude there was a misuse of funds, but said there was a pattern of behaviour that fell below the standards expected of MPs. The Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, will meet Met Commissioner Sir Mark Rowley tomorrow to discuss community relations. It comes as Sir Mark is facing calls to quit over his handling of pro-Palestinian protests, with the former Home Secretary, Swella Braverman, suggesting he's emboldened anti-Semites. The campaign against anti-Semitism is also calling for Sir Mark to resign or be sacked after its chief executive was described as openly Jewish by an officer. The Met Police have now responded in a statement saying the Assistant Commissioner Matt Twist has written to Gideon Falter to offer a private meeting to apologise. A decision by the US to approve £49 billion in aid for Ukraine has been welcomed by the UK, with the Foreign Secretary describing it as a vital step forward. After months of wrangling, American politicians ended a deadlock, agreeing to provide a package which will also help replenish weapons and munitions. President Zelensky says the move will keep the war from expanding and will save thousands of lives. It now heads to the Senate, which is expected to pass the bill in the next few days. And a record 50,000 people ran the London Marathon today, completing the 26.2-mile route. They started just after 10am this morning, the event raising millions of pounds for charities. Our very own GB News political editor, Chris Hope, was one of the many who crossed the finishing line today. Well, I've done it. I got round 26.2 miles, 5 hours, 8 minutes, a bit slower than normal for me. Had a very sore left hip at some point. That was really hard, but here's the proof, here's the medal. That's why you do this, these kind of things. We raised, I think, over £7,000 for scope. I'll check on it online later. It's a great cause. It's moving, it's exhausting, and it's well worth the effort. And if you're mad like me, why not try and run it? 
And for the latest stories, sign up to GB News Alerts by scanning the QR code on your screen or go to gbnews.com slash alerts. Now it's time for headliners. Hello and welcome to Headliners. This is your first look at Monday's newspapers. I'm Cressida Wetton and I'm joined tonight by a man who spends his days calmly fighting cranks on Twitter. It's Josh Howie. <laughs> and a man who's, man who's much rasher, it's the People's Gavin Paul Cox. Yay! How are you both? I'm good. good. I've had a busy day, actually. Have I, I ran the London Marathon. Did, uh, did you? Yes. And you then look... I did Free Speech Nation. And now I'm here. I'm barely tired, actually. It's because of, uh, I like... What, uh, what, what time do you get? Oh, today, uh, I think it's like 3 hours 30, something like that. That's amazing. How are your knees? Oh, no, they're fine. I'm on a sort of uh, high crisp-based diet that keeps me going. So I, I use crisps and or chips uh, to keep my uh, Fantastic. Josh, up. any athletic feats today? I did some more DIY. And that's <laughs> Who's what... been following my DIY yeah. journey? Have you moved into a new place? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's all I on the old place. the TikTok <laughs> channel. All right. Um, let's take a look at the headlines for tomorrow. So the Daily Mail has Jewish leaders call on Met Chief to quit. Oh, yeah, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> The Guardian has PM <laughs> faces calls to put Afghan concessions in Rwanda bill. The Times leads with voters put police in the dock. The I has Tories face new pay clash with public sector workers before autumn election. The Daily Mirror has Together for Stephen. And finally, the Daily Star has Rain, Rain, Go Away. And those are your front pages. OK, what has The Guardian gone with, Josh? Uh, I just realised that I'm dressed a bit Matrixy. I feel like this is... Bought... What, a leather coat? Uh, no, I just feel like I'm in, like, all in black. I'm not... If this is Matrix did headliners, this is, this is how I feel like they would dress. I think if The Matrix did headliners, it would just be headliners. Oh, you think? Yeah, yeah, that could be... This could be a double bluff, actually. Anyway, <laughs> uh, this could be The Matrix. Was that in The Guardian? <laughs> no, that's straight... Uh, no, Come it on, was about Rwanda. It, just, it was about Rwanda and I didn't want to get into it. Yeah. Mm. PM faces calls to put Afghan concession in the Rwanda bill. This has been sent back up and down like a yo-yo to the House of Lords. They're finally going to vote on it. And now, in a nice bit of politicking, um, a Labour peer has added this amendment saying that... Um, that any Afghan refugees who have basically fought with UK forces should be exempt. Because the idea is that anybody who came over illegally would then be able to be sent to Rwanda, but they're trying to put this amendment in. And you know what? It's a nice thing, because who is actually going to really argue against people who fought with UK army forces being then sent to Rwanda if they come over? There is an issue specifically with Afghan... Um, uh, people who've, who've helped UK forces because there isn't mm -hmm. hasn't been the means for them to legally come over here. There hasn't been the the offices right. in Afghanistan just basically aren't working, so there are no applications going through. Uh, so that is a nice, like I say, a bit of bit of politics there. But this will pass. It will finally go through, and then we will s possibly see one of his five. So next five uh, promises actually happen. One in five, Rishi Paul. Thoughts? Do you think it's going to happen? Yes, I think it'll happen. I think uh, all the political winds are behind him to make it happen. It, but it's going to be well staged, isn't it? We're not going to see... You know, this isn't going to be the, 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 the start of the end of illegal immigration into the UK, uh, but this will happen. And it is good to see something like this. I mean, we have to be very careful here. I'm not entirely against these third-party countries um, becoming places where we are able to manage our immigration crisis. And we do have a crisis. However, like Josh rightly pointed out, you know, we've got people from other countries that are fighting alongside our own troops, probably offering much more to our country than some people within it, including myself, then they, they have every right to be here. Do you swap places with one of them? No, no, no. I'd, I'd quite happily go to Rwanda, actually. It looks blooming lovely. It does. Fantastic weather. OK, uh, moving on to The Times, Paul. So, The Times, voters put police in the dock. I'm not sure this is too much of a surprise 
at the moment, but only 37% of voters believe the police are doing a good job, survey reveals, as most think they are doing a worse job than 30 years ago. I, I, I often wonder with stories like this whether that has always been true throughout history, that if you'd asked that question <laughs> in 1920, they would have said 1890 was much better, etc., etc. But, of course, we, we, we find ourselves in an environment now where uh, actual crime is being confused with ideology. You know, we've got, this, we've got words that are problematic now. We've got people that are being, you know, arrested for being openly Jewish. If I may just interject and just say, we also have a problem where actual crime is not being taken as actual crime. Yes. And I would argue that that is equally, if not more so, a problem. And I think the, the whole of this, the whole, the whole thing here is that the optics are terrible for the police. It doesn't matter quite what they do, we end up focusing in on all the terrible things. And it, go, it goes without saying, I think, that it's a very difficult job to be a police officer, particularly on the front line. I certainly wouldn't want to do it. And, you know, I'm pleased that we do have a police force. But I think we could all give them a much greater chance of success by taking away a lot of this nonsense. Yes, I think the thing is, you say you're pleased that we have a police force, but the problem is how much policing are they actually getting done? And in terms of business leaders and their what they're seeing, their people like shoplifting and it not being dealt with, this idea that uh, I think 26% of people, if they're, burg if they're burgled, expect the police to actually do something about it. Like that is not what we pay our taxes for. That is not a healthy way to run a, uh, a democracy where people will be rightly uh, caught and punished for their crimes. Uh, but this is part of a wider study which is going on at the moment. It's going to report next April, so whatever the next government might be, possibly Labour, uh, will have the findings then. But this is a real overwrite of the entire criminal justice system. So it's not just about the police, it's about the courts. And to see... I'm sure that there are a lot of things that... The, 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 a lot of ways that the system could be working better. Yeah, well, that's always the way, isn't it? With, in modern times, we've got body cam footage, we've got bits and pieces going viral mm. on Twitter. I do have some sympathy for the police um, because it's, it's a time when everyone's under more scrutiny. Now, we all know that if you make any mistakes that end up on Twitter, that's what people know about, not the ten brilliant things that you did. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Maybe they should do two brilliant things. <laughs> Fair point. All right. Uh, next up is the mail, Josh. Yeah, Jewish leaders call on Met Chief to quit. So this is the kind of ongoing throw of uh, some footage, which I believe happened last Saturday. Yeah. We go of a Jewish man walking through London after synagogue, wearing a yarmulke, being uh, openly Jewish, as the saying has sort of caught on, and stopped from being able to cross the road, which well, there was the pro-Palestinian march, and the police basically accusing him of sort of being provocative and even threatening arrest if he didn't try to move away, which obviously, and you made this point earlier on Free Speech Nation and a different uh, outfit, Paul, uh, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but of course that puts, puts paid to this idea that these uh, marches are peace marches where Jews aren't under threat and they're about peace and making and kumbaya, when actually when someone dare to be visibly Jewish and to see the footage of him being threatened, yet the police are going to go, oh, no, we're going to arrest you for putting yourself in this position, for, for existing, essentially, as a Jew, as a London Jew here, as opposed to... You see that person over there threatening the Jewish guy? Why don't you go and arrest him? This is the problem. Isn't it? Had that, that approach been taken from day one, I don't think the problem would have got to the level it has now. Paul, thoughts? No, absolutely right. Um... Uh, because Ian you know, Lewis has actually made this point a couple of times. I know he's a contrarian and he comes out with a lot of nonsense about meat and Velikovsky, that sort of stuff. Mm. But he made a very good point about the fact that the guy did put himself in harm's way. Now, you could argue that if you were a Brighton fan who stood in front of a bunch of Millwall fans because that would be potentially threatening. What we've been told endlessly since, you know, a week after the 7th of October is that these are all peaceful protests. And... What this guy has managed to do single-handedly is expose it for what it is, which is not, because it, it, it makes no difference whether they, whether they protest every weekend. And I respect and uphold their right to do so, but it makes no difference that they do it. It's not changing the outcome, and it's becoming more and more divisive and, dare I say, more and more dangerous 
for Jewish people in London. Well, absolutely. I saw somebody on Twitter earlier really sneering at the fact that he'd recorded this. Oh, mm. that's very convenient. And I thought, no, the whole point is, at any time, you should be able to walk on the streets. It doesn't matter. It, they're kind of implying, oh, he'd planned it, he'd orchestrated it. No, you should be able to walk on the streets there's any a, there's, time. There's, there's, there's the right to protest and there's the right to exist in the city you live or anywhere as a Jew in this case. Those are two competing rights. And the fact is that people have been using intimidation and actual violence, as we've seen, and, and, and hatred, and Jews have been kept out of central London over the last six months. And they have been emboldened from day one because people were on the streets celebrating after October 7th and the police did nothing as flares went up and people climbed buildings and you see the police like, oh, please come down, oh, whatever. Uh, right. And people with Hamas flags and people with chanting jihad and the police actually gaslighting everybody going, no, no, it could mean multiple things. They have not done their job. I do have sympathy for rank and file officers. It is a hard job. I understand that they're greatly outnumbered here, but at the same time, I, I have a right to just exist in my city and I'm going to take it that right next week as I walk through central London wearing my yarmulke, which I do on Saturdays when I go to shul, and I'm, that's what I'm going to do. It's not a protest, it's not a march, it's a statement. It's just Josh Howie existing. OK, that's the front pages dealt with, but coming up, Rishi's appalled, Romford police are on the lookout and Penny Morden has grand ambitions for UK defence. See you in two. Nana Queer. Weekends from 3 p.m. J.K. Rowling has accused politicians of snuggling up to trans campaigners. The Harry Potter author has called for an investigation into why political parties are embracing the language of pro-trans groups. So is it time to ditch campaign groups such as those? Well, welcome again to Michael Asher's former Labour Party advisor Matthew Laza, also businessman and activist Adam Brooks. I think the cash report is really welcome. I think there's been a huge amount of agreement, including from some uh, trans rights campaigners, that there's an awful lot of good in the cash report. I, I think that I'm more concerned about Mermaids, which is currently under a charity commission uh, investigation, uh, and some of the reports, if they're to be believed, like sending out chest binders, are more alarming. Mm. I think on Stonewall, which has been has done such great work uh, over the past 30 years uh, uh, on LGBT rights... Said that... two-year-olds could be trans. Now, that, that is one of the most horrifying things I read today. Actually, J.K. Rowling tweeted that out there. To say that a two-year-old can think that they can be another gender when my four-year-old still thinks she's Elsa on some days. You yeah. know, there's no common sense and, and it, to me it's I very... Think it was very badly phrased, it's, very, it's very sinister that these people actually believe that these kids want to change gender. And, and unfortunately out there, there are parents that almost see a trans kid as a fashion accessory now. And I think this whole... Um, agenda has pushed on people that this is normal to change gender and we have to push back and as I said earlier to be trans is not normal. Well, I don't, I, don't, I don't agree it's with that extreme. phrasing. I think, no, I think it's, it's I think extreme. It's a big step, Adam, but there are clearly people throughout history uh, uh, who, who have uh, been But it's trans. not normal behaviour, is it? I think, for, I think as far as children are concerned, children need to be given the space uh, to, um, uh, to explore the world, and that can mm. include experimenting with, uh, you know, um, uh, breaking previous gender stereotypes. That doesn't mean that people should be sort of labelled at the age of two, which I completely uh, disagree mm. with. I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels, we're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. We're GB News, and we come from a proud tradition of British journalism. That's why I'm so excited to be here. It's something so new. The first news channel to be launched in Britain in over 30 years. Launched to represent the views of the British people. To go where other broadcasters refuse to go. How did you find out about the story in the first place? Launched with one aim. To be the fearless champion of Britain. It's an absolutely fantastic atmosphere here. This is GB News. The People's Channel! GB News, Britain's news channel. Welcome back to Headliners. I'm Cressida Wetton, still joined by Josh Howey and Paul Cox. Uh, beginning with The Independent, and Paul, Romford Police have been on the phone to ask, what were your whereabouts yesterday? 
Um, uh, I wasn't in Romford, I know that much. Racist rant pro by police after town centre video goes viral. This is a terrible video, which uh, some of our viewers and listeners may have already seen. A racist attack that went viral on X is being investigated as a hate crime. A group of women were forced to defend themselves from the tirade as they walked along Romford town centre. So, some more context on this. This was a Palestinian... This was a, a uh, quite clearly white British middle-aged man um, uh, remonstrating with... Uh, a woman that was a Muslim with a Palestinian flag with her. She'd clearly been to a protest that was local um, to Romford. And I can't condone nor defend the man's actions. Uh, never would either, by the way. Um, because uh, what, he, what, what he's essentially done has been extremely threatening, given, it, given all the, the usual racist trope about, you know, go back to where you come from, et cetera, et cetera. One thing I would say, and to add a little bit of balance, and sometimes these things do need it, is there was no context. We saw it mid-rant. We saw it happening. And we don't know what happened previous. And we mustn't forget, this is against the backdrop of very, very high tensions. People are getting fed up. They've, they've, they've had enough. This is that people, people feel very defensive uh, for the Jewish community as well. And I'm not, this is not to defend any of this guy's actions. You, you do not well, the language win any is arguments. absolutely appalling. It was aggressive language. The video is not worth us playing it because there's so much swearing in it. We can't really mm. listen to it. Um, but I, I looked at a few different papers covering this, and in the comments section, there were a lot of people talking about two-tier policing, and the general tone of it was they would always say, this guy's absolutely out of order, disgusting behaviour, don't want it, this is what I think has led to this. And then they would talk about typically two-tier policing. Yeah, um, the, 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 two, the two points that I would make from this is... Uh, they're calling it Islamophobic. It's, there's no such thing as Islamophobic. What it is is anti-Muslim bigotry. That doesn't make it OK. I'm just saying that the use of the correct language is important. It's still... There was obvious hatred from him, yeah, but it isn't arguably true. racist. If it was an Indian woman, it, he's not addressing this as a, sheik, a, a Sikh person or somebody. Like, the ethnicity of the person isn't necessarily the major factor here, as opposed to how much of it was because of this person's religion, but also it was obviously partly because of their involvement at this march that we didn't see anything from. We know at these marches that, they're, they're, that, they, that there is hate there addressed in terms of call for genocide of Jews from the river to the sea, the, the chanting for an intifada, which is the murder uh, world of Jews around the world. So... Um, there's a sort of hypocrisy. I'm not saying two wrongs make a right, but the fact that he addresses and says he's talking about how saying, well, you're, you know, talking about the, how the rockets have been fired into Israel and that's something that this person seemingly s supports, it, it, you know, it's a bit more blurred than we might think. But Absolutely. his behaviour but is the unacceptable. The problem is, he's a bloke, I guess he looks six foot, she looks five foot two, something like that. It's just... That part of it is completely unacceptable. And there are people in the comments saying, would you do that to a group of Muslim men? Well, no. highly unlikely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's not the way to go about things. It, it is hateful. I just don't agree with the word Islamophobia. Or, in this case, I don't know if it is a racist attack. It was a hateful attack, though, for sure. It was. It certainly was. Sticking with the independent, Josh, uh, carrying that sword makes sense now. Penny Morden loves weapons, doesn't she? She does. Well, she's, you know, she's a Royal Navy uh, reservist. She makes a big deal out of it. Penny Morden, Israel-style Iron Dome defence system is needed in the UK. So this is really arguably a kind of a play for her future leadership. She's going down the defence route. She's going to be the defence person, uh, obviously playing into her history. She can't use the angle of, like, the anti-woke angle because she was part of the gender ideology, arguably. Um, and Kemi seems to have that pretty much sewn up. So <laughs> this is her thing. It's like, we need more spending. The issues are, first of all, Labour is incredibly seen as... And I don't say incredibly because I disagree with it. I'm just saying that I, it's amazing what a huge jump that has happened in this country to see uh, Labour being ahead of Tories when it comes to defence matters. The, the country feels more safe with the Labour government. Um... <laughs> Which, which may well be true, uh, because we haven't been spending enough on our defences, and it would be lovely if we lived in a world where this 2% and going up now 2.5, but we should be up to 3. It was 5% during the Cold War. That kind of money could make massive difference 
to people's lives, to people around the world, but people in the UK, to building houses, to more resources for disabled people. But So there's an estimate in here that, that the uh, Israeli Iron Dome cost about a billion... Uh, I don't know if it's pounds. No, yeah, it's a billion pounds, dollars. Just to get rid of the recent... The 300 drone. rockets, yes. Yeah. So it's a hell of an investment, isn't it? So in 21 to 22, the UK spent 45.9 billion on defence. We can't afford one of those billions for the Iron Dome, can we? Just go, well, this is... Uh, yeah, it's also these arrow rockets, which... So the other thing, calling... Everybody sort of uses this Iron Dome as a shorthand. The reality is that Iron Dome is specifically designed for a specific type of short-range rocket. Our real threat would be coming probably from Russia, so that it just wouldn't work. So we need like a platinum dome. No, we, we need another one. These arrow rockets, which are much more expensive, uh, more expensive than a billion the, quid for. Well, they, 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 that, that attack was also with long-range missiles. Anyway, so but um, we do need to spend more on defence. There's no doubt about that. We are moving into a different phase. It's unfortunate. I wish that we weren't as a human species. But, but this country needs to spend more. And it's not all bad, because that money goes back into the economy. As long as we don't just go and spend it all on French fighter jets, <laughs> maybe if we actually invested in UK um, systems, that, that's not a bad thing. Paul, thoughts on this? Well, Penny Morden, she hasn't just cherry-picked defence. You know, she, she's the MP for North Portsmouth. She is very close ties to uh, the Royal Navy. She understands the defence industry. She's had roles within it in the past. And I think she's right. It's very difficult to disagree with her on this. Why wouldn't we? I don't think I'd want to meet the person who doesn't want to, who wouldn't want to defend themselves or their country that they live in, or the family, or the communities. Was written. Well, I think we actually have quite a few people in this country who... <laughs> well, well, I, I agree, and I say it slightly facetiously, because knowing that this, 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 this is true... Look, it's... It's, it's all very well. I mean, I, 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 the only thing I would disagree with with Labour is, is it, it's since Keir Starmer's turned around the perspective from Labour with regards to defence, because under Corbyn, you know, we'd have thought that we, all we needed to do was, you know, uh, wave dandelions at people and they would have fallen in love well, with we're us. We're all friends anyway, aren't we? Yeah, and we'd just, we'd just offer them jam. But, you know, un, un, he's playing a shrewd game here, Starmer. However... When he gets into power, he's going to realise why the money's not been spent on defence, because there are so many different issues. And you just... Basically, if you, if you don't spend on defence, you spend somewhere else, you're always sacrificing something. So is it police? You know, I've been involved in situations in a previous job before where a terrorist attack has happened on the day of a budget and it has changed the whole budget for local government. Absolutely, and we all know there's no magic money tree. OK, news in the Daily Mail now about the Conservatives preparing what could be the mother of all Ofcom complaints, Paul. <laughs> yes, the Conservatives assembled a dossier of evidence... Can't say mother anymore. Uh, no, you shouldn't. <laughs> they haven't gone to Iceland anyway. ..about alleged uh, anti-Tory bias by the BBC as it prepares to mount a pre-election challenge to the corporation's impartiality. And a Tory source said the BBC aren't even pretending to be impartial in their news coverage these days. And we would agree with them. I, th I think all of us... Maybe I'd, um, Josh may have a slightly different view. And I'd be interested to see how the BBC do defend themselves. Because if we... We've only got to go back and look at John Sopel and Emily Maitlis. Now, I know we reel them out every time we have this discussion. But the reason we do is because these people led the coverage for the last three or four general election campaigns under the idea that they were not biased anyway. And now they've got the News Agents podcast, which is entirely left-leaning and doesn't even add any balance to the conversation whatsoever. And we know that's their personal view. So there is evidence to suggest that the, that the, the BBC are biased. Um, but, but, we always hear this from both sides of the argument. There are many people on the left, Labour voters, who would say that the, the BBC's clearly favour the Tories. I'm not sure that their remit of being impartial was ever achievable, and that's the problem here. Interesting point. Yeah, I yeah. I've, I've have seen people complaining that they're not, uh, they're not left enough. Yeah, I, I, I mean... Is it, have we changed? Have they changed? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> uh, I've just stayed still, John. It's, it's a, the world that's changed. It's a nice idea. It's whether we've woken up more. I think that they've changed. I think they have been partially captured. They are definitely impartial on many matters, including gender um, and, I believe, Israel and just Jews, Jews generally. They, there's been some terrible things of the, the way they've reported in the past attacks on Jewish kids. But... Saying all of that, I just don't think you should trust anybody, including us.
I'm sorry to say that. <laughs> just don't trust. Like we, I, I think that we are less hypocritical. That's what I. I think I, we do our best. I, no, 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 no. That's the thing. I think we side. do our best. I think that mistakes are made, and we, and you, and you admit them, and you strive to be better. But I don't think there is this like purity thing, no. like this kind of snobbery, looking down the nose. Just, just trust us because we say it, and that's what I think the BBC has. And I think it's wrong, and I think nowadays everybody has woken up to the, that you have to check multiple sources. And I do believe that we are less hypocritical. And, um, you know, trust everything I say, of course, but... Do your own research, don't listen to Josh Howie. OK, finally, in this section, The Mirror, Rishi Sunak promised to lead a government with integrity, professionalism and accountability at every level. So he's had another brilliant week, hasn't he, Josh? Yeah, Tory MP Mark Menzies to stand down amid claims he used campaign funds to pay bad people. He was already... Uh, there was already a bit of a hoo-ha about 10 years ago, I think it was, where he'd... Um, there was a Brazilian male escort, um, and <laughs> who that's has... the first time I've heard somebody flesh out, and I'm not saying all Brazilian male escorts are bad people, but no. that's the beginning of a bit of a spicy story, cos we've been saying bad people for sort of yeah. two days now, and I'm thinking, when are we going to get more information? When are we going to start talking Brazilian male what escorts? What was he hey. up to? So he called up his 78-year-old campaign manager in the middle of the night, I need £6,000 straight away, it's a life or death thing. No, and to be fair to him, We've all been there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, twice it's this, not, it's twice not, this weekend. You Josh. don't have to be a Tory MP to be like calling up 78 year olds and going, I need six and a half grand, life and death. Brazil, Brazil, bring the Brazilian football shirt. <laughs> but anyway, he's gone, Paul. We've, he's, we've lost a, an absolute legend, possibly. Someone yeah. we'd like to go for a drink with. Yeah, and at sure. this point... At can this imagine every night is going to be party night. <laughs> at, at, at this point, does it really matter, Cressida? I mean, you know, if Rishi Sunak left now, it wouldn't affect the Tories' chances. But it energy. wouldn't be as exciting as that. OK, time for a break. Join us in part three for news of a hate crime, the latest on NHS toilets and a debate about Ofsted. See you soon. Good evening. Welcome to your latest GB News weather from the Met Office. So after a drier end to the weekend for many of us today, it looks like change is on the way. An area of low pressure situated out to the north of the UK brings some weak frontal systems that will slowly sink their way southwards, particularly into the start of the new working week. And that area of high pressure we've seen pushes away towards the northwest. So a cloudy end to the day for much of eastern Scotland and northern England as that rain continues to sink its way southwards overnight. So quite a cloudy picture quite across the board into the early hours of Monday morning. But southeastern parts of England still holding on to some clearer skies and we could even see some frost here, although not quite as cold under all that cloud and rain and particularly across parts of Scotland holding up into the high single figures. So a cloudier start for many of us on Monday, particularly compared to what we saw over the weekend. And this rain continues to spread its way southwards through Monday daytime, not turning particularly heavy, but definitely a grey and damp day compared to the recent couple of days. Northern parts of Scotland probably seeing the best of the sunshine through the afternoon. I'm feeling warm here with highs of 14 or 15 degrees, but definitely feeling much chillier across much of England and Wales under all that cloud and rain. That cloud and rain does eventually clear its way towards the southeast to start on Tuesday. So there will be some brighter spells, particularly for the northern half of the UK. Plenty of sunshine around through the morning. One or two showers bubbling up through the afternoon, particularly along some North Sea coastal regions and staying quite cloudy in the southeast through the afternoon. Further showers on their way through Wednesday and Thursday, but hints of low pressure returning as we head towards the second half of the week. I'm Christopher Hope. And I'm Gloria DiPiero, bringing you... PMQ's live here on GB News. Whenever Parliament is in session on a Wednesday at midday, we'll bring you live coverage of Prime Minister's questions. We'll be asking our viewers and listeners to submit the questions that they would like to put to the Prime Minister, and we'll put that to our panel of top politicians in our Westminster studio. That's PMQ's live here on GB News, Britain's election channel. Every Saturday, 10 till 12, we'll bring you all of the news that you need to know. We'll also remind you that there is so much to smile about. It's my favourite time of the week. I get to relax, enjoy some lighthearted stories and let Ellie teach me about fashion too. <laughs> That's Saturday Morning Live, every Saturday, 10 till 12. Only on GB News, Britain's news channel. Join me, Neil Oliver, every Sunday night at 6pm on GB News. And if an hour is not nearly enough for you, go to gbnews.com for special extended episodes online every Friday at 9pm, where we can truly get into the nitty-gritty of what's going on. GB News, Britain's news channel.
If you want your news to be straight talking. This is a nightmare for the Conservatives again. Down to earth. It's not just Nottingham where this is happening, is it? And most importantly, honest. Hard-working, middle-class taxpayers, they'll get their book thrown at them. Then catch me, Martin Daubney, Monday to Friday, 3 to 6 p.m. on GB News, Britain's news channel. Welcome back to Headliners. Opening this section with the mirror and news that a convicted sex offender is getting letters in prison. Now, who on earth would write to them, Paul? Oh, it was me, wasn't it? Uh, trans double rapist <laughs> prisoner claims was to it be. You a... that wrote to them. Yeah, I, yeah, of course I did. Yeah, trans double rapist prisoner claims to be hate crime victim in jail. Uh, Makeup row, makeup row. So, uh, double rapist uh, Isla Bryson. Oh, good, it's Isla Bryson. This is going to be interesting, isn't it? 32 from Clyde Bank, Scotland, says they have been misgendered by staff at HMP Edinburgh. The prison has apologised following the complaint. Right, I want to say right now, Isla Bryson is a man. Isla Bryson is pretending to be a woman to get a lovely little life in prison. Isla Bryson was a man that raped a woman. Two at... women. Two women, and I just cannot hear... I don't care if he was misgendered in prison. I really do not care. It's a shame because the SNP have propped this up for so long. They didn't need to. Nicola Sturgeon started it. Hamza Youssef has carried it on. We just need to call a spade a spade here. Isla Bryson is a bloke. There's a part of me that didn't want to cover this because I think, do you know what, I'm not giving this airtime. But on the other hand, we need to see that, that this is something that some people said would never happen. It has happened and here we are. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 to, to continue from what you were saying, it's not just the, Scott, the SNP, this is the mirror. And the mirror yeah. points out, Bryson, who was born a male, no, Bryson, who is still a male, Bryson, who, uh, when he dies, will forever be a male, Dyson, Bryson, who 10 years... Of, 10,000 years from now, when his bones are dug up, will be identified as a male. So th that kind of language just permeates these institutions, in this case, the mirror, uh, which is left-leaning, uh, obviously has an issue with facts, you know, born a male. Anyway, but the fact that this... The other fact is that this, this prison officer had to immediately apologise, sort of called, his, called him son and went, all right, son... And they went, oh, oh, I'm sorry. And then he complained and then they, he's got an apology for it. A written apology. This is I a just, rapist. This blows my mind. Yeah. This is a prison service that hasn't got enough staff, is busy, he's got lots on. What have we got time to do? Let's write to Isla Bryson. I anyway, just... It would make a good episode of Porridge. Amazing. Uh, moving on to the Daily Mail and news that activists are in charge of hospital toilets now, Josh. Yeah, leaked internal NHS trust document likens people who are uncomfortable using same-sex toilets to racists. So this is for the Cambridge University hostels. This is another captured institution. And the document, uh, which the Sun found, said that uh, just the trust will not adapt practice in light of racist concerns expressed as discomfort, so the trust will not adapt practice in light of transphobic concerns expressed as dust. So it's an incredible <laughs> comparison. And when we're saying transphobic, what they really mean is women who want to protect their spaces. Vulnerable we women see who vulnerable are in women hospital. in a hospital. We saw that we there was a case about a year or two ago, a woman was raped on on a ward, on a female only ward, by a trans woman, a man, and the police and the and the hostel would not admit that it could was possible because they said no, there there are only women here. So you couldn't be raped. And it was only when she was able to obtain footage that then the police was able to get involved and she was able to prove it. So an incredible situation. W women, some women, want their own spaces and that's totally fine. To say that that's racist, to say that transphobic is disgusting, to say that that's racist, to compare it in any way, is equally disgusting. And again, which is just another institution captured, they're spending four grand to send the senior staff to equality, diversity and inclusion training courses here. That's four grand just for one person to How go to one of these courses. How many toilets can you build with four grand? Just build How many people toilets. can you treat? Yeah, well... It's, it, it's so upsetting that this stuff is... Here we are. It's, we've been talking about this for like years the and it's gaslight. still going on! If you're in a marriage and you raise a concern and the other person just says, no, that's ridiculous, I'm not listening, that, that marriage isn't going to go well, is it? It drives me nuts, Paul. Uh, correct. Um, so... It's ideology top trumps, isn't it? If you can't quite get enough points on your card, 
for saying uh, transphobic. You go straight to racist, don't you? It, do it doesn't have to be racist. You, you just know that if, if you're not quite getting the message across by calling someone transphobic, you need to go to racist because nothing beats racist. And everything's racist, so these people must be bad. I mean, it's an absolute nonsense. I don't know how we find ourselves in this position. Pl hospitals are supposed to be a safe space for people to go and recover, be treated, be, you know, uh, be taken in as a patient and made better. And do no harm. Do no harm. And this puts people in harm's way. I'm just... I'm getting exasperated with this. I know we're on GB News and we talk about this uh, infinitely, but I'm glad we do. I'm really glad we did. Well, one thing I would say, not exactly in their defence, but we don't have a date on this. And because this, I think the, the, uh, this ideology is starting to crumble, isn't it? We've had the cast review, it's, be it's beginning. Look, they talked about it on I Got News for You this week. I mean, that must be a sign that it's the end. Yeah. So maybe this is actually uh, in the past and, and we're moving forward. I don't maybe, know. but there's £4,000 for spending Madness. sending these people off. Yeah, indeed. We're looking at the Times next. Paul, can we summarise Ofsted rulings as inadequate? Uh, yeah, well, we can. We probably shouldn't do it in the future. No more inadequate uh, one-word Ofsted rulings could be ditched. So, Ofsted one-word uh, judgments uh, which brand the schools within a single adjective, such as outstanding or inadequate, are likely to be scrapped following the suicide of head teacher Ruth Perry. Very sad story. We've covered it before. It's, it's well known in the news cycle. And this is good news. This is really good news. If something comes out of uh, a very tragic um, incident like the suicide of Ruth Perry and it is that Ofsted are uh, challenged for what they do, then this is a good thing as far as I'm concerned. I'd love to see schools um, measured as happy or enjoyable. We, we send our young people... Um, um, Josh, we know, because we, we, we had unpleasant experiences. But isn't it that you don't need a... I mean, I, I've never put a child in school, but surely no one's going on a one-word review. I've always been People surprised that this is no. needed. Cos don't you go to the school, you talk to the teachers, you get a feel for it, surely? Isn't that how you pick a school? No, I... You know what? I, I'm going to disagree with you, but I, you... These are important. They are a shorthand to understand the levels at. They also arguably raise standards of schools because it gives them something to attain. Mm -hmm. I think the issue here, beyond the, the immediate tragedy, and it turns out, it was, it is how they went about it. Because in this case, there were failings, I believe, in terms of how the tests run, how they communicated. She, it went from an outstanding school to uh, inadequate overnight, mm -hmm. and then it turns out a few weeks later it got redone as good. So... Um, I'm not saying the system is perfect and the system can do with work, but having something clean and easy for people to understand, for people to strive for, for parents to easily understand, I think it's a shame to throw, throw the baby out with the bathwater. It's also quite arbitrary, though, Josh. That's the only thing I would say. Well, I don't think defense. it is arbitrary. It's a, it's a system of... Well, but I, like any system, but, 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 but the, 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 the things they measure them against, for me, are arbitrary. I mean... Uh, who one person's inadequate is another person's good, vice versa, you know. Oh, well, I you, think you have your inadequate, new... I'll stick with... Uh... <laughs> I'm going with outstanding. I'll, I'll but I just, you know, people do judge, you know, does your kid go to an outstanding school? Right. People do judge. I have something to put on the flyer. OK, Josh, you've got this next story in The Telegraph. How's the temperature over there? Are you comfortable? Very, yes, thank good. you. So that's very, very thoughtful of you. SNP report says it's not just women who get menopause symptoms and it's true uh men also get uh symptoms of menopause uh my <laughs> wife is going through the perimenopause and i would just like to say that i am suffering as well <laughs> i get no sympathy whatsoever uh and this is a as you were talking earlier about this is a document but this is a document from 2020 which does the usual people who menstruate language the erasure of women and um, because women is such a terrible, disgusting word, and how dare you refer to that. The, of course, we should, I think, be talking more about uh, the menopause, and it does have a serious physical impact on women. But to, to try and raise it as an issue, at the same time obfuscating who it's actually impacting yeah. is a stupid way to go about it. Well, yeah, at first I actually thought, oh, maybe they're referring to uh, middle-aged men suffering and buying sports cars. But no, they, they're really just talking about the minority of uh, trans people who become men but have women's uh, equipment, Paul. It feels like 
women, uh, the menopause in particular as a, as a subject matter for women, is finally being taken seriously and being much better understood, the impact on the women and how it affects their life and how it affects the people around them. And all of a sudden, we've managed to get to a point with that. And, like, with a lot of things with women have come on this, this journey to being understood and appreciated, all of a sudden, men have got involved again. Ah, oh, man, and you just said journey. I'd, Brilliant. I'd say here they say transgender, non-binary and intersex employees may also experience menopause. No. Transgender... Women, non-binary... Women, non-binary doesn't exist. Intersex, they are still women. This idea that there's this third sex called insects. No. If you're intersex, you are still either a woman or a man. Okay. It's binary. Clarity. Uh, a story in The Guardian now about trying to get kids to listen to an old bloke, Paul. Yeah, <laughs> Salman Rushdie being the old bloke. Salman Rushdie has warned young people against forgetting the value of free speech. And I was starting to think when I was reading this, why is this in The Guardian? But we'll get to that in a minute. As discussed... Uh, sorry, this is about Salman Rushdie. Free, he, he's saying to young people must value free speech. As discussed, the very big and negative impact of a second... Trump presidency in a rare public appearance since his stabbing. Now, it's the Trump bit that The Guardian are really homing in on and here. Um, they're not that. I, I, w I would quite happily argue with anyone who reads The Guardian or with anyone from The Guardian, they're not particularly interested in free speech. They're, they're much more interested in the speech they want to hear. And that is true of probably the male and anybody else. Um, the only place where I really see open debate is here. Genuinely here. And I know Josh said earlier you shouldn't listen to us, and maybe you shouldn't, but what, one thing you do get on GB News is you get... They go and speak to the people. Don't just trust us 100%, as I was What you should do yeah. is go listen on our everybody. website and read the Your Say comments from the public. That's, oh, uh, that's yeah, a good, balanced thing to do. But I, I, I would, I, the best way to cover this is that um, Summer Rushdie has... He's come out and publicly speaking again, which is fantastic since he's uh, uh, he horrible. Was at, he was at, unfortunately, he was at home on a Zoom call. Was he? Yeah. Oh, really? I didn't... <laughs> uh, is that true? Yes. Oh, really? That is... But it's, Salman good, to see, it's, good, to, it's good to see him, good to see them. Uh, I'll just read what he says here. The defence of free expression yeah. begins at the point at which somebody says something you don't like. When Absolutely. you're defending what people are saying and you don't like it, that's what it is. It's painful. I've had to do it recently myself. I didn't enjoy it, but... That is what you have to do. For the greater good... Right, that's the end of part three, but join us in the final section for frightening news about massive hornets, a solution to the housing crisis and the best excuse ever for almost anything. Britain's Newsroom. Weekday mornings from 9.30. Men's mental health. Yeah. Men are starting to talk a lot more. Yeah. You've been through a lot of stuff that uh, people don't know about. Yeah, I mean, um, the last few years for me have been very, very difficult. Um, people, don't, people see me on tour, performing, making music. Um, but um, myself and my wife, um, you know, we went through um, two miscarriages. Oh, um, wow. You know, and, you know, for us... That was a very devastating mm. course. time and very difficult to, to to know how to kind of process those emotions. Mm. And I guess as a man, I I did the thing of bottling up my emotions and where I feel comfortable to to be able to express myself is in the studio. Whereas you know she had obviously a different reaction to you know what happened to us because not only was it happening to her mentally, psychologically, but it was happening to her physically as well. And I think what Something that she really would wanted to see from me was that sensitivity and that emotion. And I thought that as a man, being strong was trying to bottle up my emotions and just show her that no, mm. you know that I'm, I'm being strong for her. Mm. But actually, being strong was is talking about it. Mm. And what's happened ever since I've started to talk about it is I've spoken to more men that have experienced baby loss. My wife forced out of me, you know, how do you feel? And I end up as a mess on the floor. I was exasperating, crying, mm -hmm. almost inconsolable. She was just holding me in her arms um, as we cried together, and we cried together. Um, and I didn't realise I needed that release so badly. Like I said, I've been able to speak to other men, and, and, and we've been able to cry together, and they've, they shared their own experiences, which they did similar to me. But actually, you know, as men, I feel like that conversation and that sensitivity and being able to be mm -hmm. emotional together... I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels. 
we're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Patrick Christie's. Every weeknight from nine, I bring you two hours of unmissable, explosive debate and headline-grabbing interviews. What impact has that had? We got death threats and the bomb threat and so on. Our job is to do what's in the best interest of our country. You made my argument for me. My guests and I tackle the issues that really matter with a sharp take on every story. I'm hearing it up and down the country. That was a beginning, not an end. Patrick Christie's tonight from 9 p.m. only on GB News, Britain's news channel. Welcome back to Headliners. Uh, there's always one story that makes me glad Lewis isn't here. And tonight, <laughs> it's in the Telegraph, Josh. This is a really big story, uh, I think. University student disciplined after flatmate overheard him saying veganism is wrong. This is a guy called Robert Ivanson. He was studying at the University of Exeter, a philosophy student. And on... But this is the insane thing, right? He was in his room, <laughs> on the phone, <laughs> saying, veganism is wrong, gender fluidity is stupid. Uh, I agree with one of those statements, the other I'm not so bothered about. And someone overheard him from outside the room and he got a summations, he had to go before a board, he had to sign a letter saying he wasn't going to be offend anybody ever again for his heart. And this, but this happened in 2018. So it's incredible that the ideology had such a hold Mm. six years ago. But it, he talks about the Stasi coming to... That is what it is. And I can't believe the story is coming out now because this is this is sort of free speech union stuff straight away. I don't think free speech union existed at the time. No. But this would be the first thing that they would should be getting involved. I don't think involved. they were upset about the gender stuff, though. I think at this time, veganism... You think was, it was the it was veganism? Peak vegan. It was peak vegan. Peak, peak vegan. Linda McCartney days, wasn't it? And the problem with this is the adults in the room, the people that are in charge of the universities, punished him agreed with the eavesdropper. They have become sort of pathetic, spineless pubes. Pubes? Uh, pubes, <laughs> as in pubic hair. Uh, which we all are... love a pube with a spine in it. Um, <laughs> do we? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but, but we have, haven't we? The adults have. In that situation, the adults should say, why were you listening? Well, it drives me mad whenever an educational body gets involved as though they were the police. It's like it's either a police incident, in which case get the police involved, or it isn't, in which case stay out of their private lives, yeah. particularly when they're talking on the phone in their bedroom. Right, let's move on to The Times uh, and an excuse a million times better than anything you've ever told your wife, Paul. Yeah, confessions of a sleepwalker. I've woken up in strangers' beds. <laughs> says Decker Aitkenhead. And uh, Decker is someone who does a lot of sleepwalking and has found themselves in some pretty awkward nighttime fixes. Now, this reminds me, actually, I used to sleepwalk as a child, Here we particularly go. as a teenager, and I got myself into the loft space and woke up in the loft space. Just like terrified. You thought you were in like a Joseph Fritzl scene. Have you ever been in the loft before? Did you know? So where you were? Uh, my my bedroom was in the eaves of the house. I was like the black sheep up upstairs, out the way. I was fed <laughs> bread and water, barely spoken to. And I, I got out of bed and climbed into the eaves, and then woke up in the eaves. There was no other way I could have got there unless it was... I've got a better story than that. Have you? I cannot repeat it here. Please. <laughs> Go to YouTube, type in Josh Howie and Marek Larwood, or I'll put it on Twitter afterwards. Really? It's the best sleepwalking story ever. That is a promise. But in the meantime, this is fascinating, and yeah. there are people here with Parkinson's disease who can move their bodies fluidly whilst they're dreaming because it affects certain parts of your brain turn on and now the parts of the frontal lobe which c contains like um, your consciousness I guess uh, is still off so you can do all of this stuff but it's incredible I mean I wonder if there's even a possibility of cures looking ways of tricking the brain or whatever but it's a, it is a fascinating article it seems like she, Decker Aikenhead has spent a lot of time weeing in pint glasses but <laughs> my story's better okay. I believe you okay Josh news from the mirror now that we're going to have a killer summer. Oh, yeah. Killer Asian hornet plague on the way uh, for UK with 3,000% increase in numbers. 
Uh, this, this kind of story happens every year, but we have seen this increase. They are terrifying. They can kill up to 50 bees an hour. We need our bees. We love our bees. They give us honey. They're already under threat with pesticides and or whatever Lewis might... <laughs> have this alternative thing. Uh, but these are really dead. They can kill people and they're terrifying and they release a hormone in you which drives all the other hornets crazy. It's got the makings of a horror film, hasn't it? Oh, for sure. It's one like the, it's the birds. and the rest come out. It's really scary. If you see one, they're basically, they've got orange stripes as opposed to Europeans which have yellow, yellow stripes. And capture them and got to kill them. We've got to kill these hornets, everybody. Plenty of them. Terrified, Paul? Yeah. <laughs> who, who wouldn't be? Uh, you know, I mean, it's in the mirror, so uh, they're, they're probably quite left -wing. I think it's just a secret excuse to tell us how brilliant bees are. It's very fashionable, isn't it, to love bees nowadays? Mm. Um, well, okay. I don't like these bees. <laughs> we could do one last story. Moving on to the Express, and an inspiring story for those of us trying to get on the property ladder, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Inside ancient Saudi Arabian lava tube that humans hid in 7,000 years ago, Josh. So one such dwelling was only recently found by archaeologists working in Saudi Arabia where evidence of an ancient shelter was found inside a vast lava tube. So it's fascinating, isn't it? The fact that, you know, I mean, lava pulls out of volcanoes. You're probably aware of that. And I know you're not Stephen Allen, but uh, it, some of us can comprehend these things. And... And obviously it solidifies, and you end up with these you end up with these vast tubes, and people have made habitats within them, people, actual people, seven thousand years ago. And you know, it's isn't it fascinating? I mean, we'd kill for that now. You'd kill for that now, oh, wouldn't you? Heaven wouldn't you live in a lava would. tube? I would live in a lava tube. Yeah, does it have plumbing? Yeah, but it's, it reminds me like Matrix, going back to the beginning. It's like that's why I dress <laughs> this way. It's like it's like Matrix. It's like Matrix Revolutions, you know, they live in the big underground caves and the lot. So vaguely, vaguely. Oh, you need remember. to watch it again. Don't watch it again. Okay. Uh, Josh is gonna go and take his red pills. The show <laughs> is nearly over. So let's take another quick look at Monday's front pages. The Daily Mail has Jewish leaders call on Met Chief to quit. The Guardian has PM faces calls to put Afghan concessions in Rwanda bill. The Times has voters put police in the dock and the Eye has Tories face new pay clash with public sector workers before autumn election. The Daily Mirror has Together for Stephen and the Daily Star has Rain Rain Goes Away and those were your front pages. That's it for tonight's show. Thanks to my guests, Josh Howie and Paul Cox. Tomorrow, Simon Evans will be here with Lewis Schaefer and Nick Dixon. Uh, obviously, we missed Lewis tonight. Uh, <laughs> and if you're watching at 5 a.m., stay tuned for breakfast. <laughs> Good night. That warm feeling inside from Boxed Boilers. Sponsors of weather on GB News. Good evening. Welcome to your latest GB News weather from the Met Office. So after a drier end to the weekend for many of us today, it looks like change is on the way. An area of low pressure situated out to the north of the UK brings some weak frontal systems that will slowly sink their way southwards, particularly into the start of the new working week. And that area of high pressure we've seen pushes away towards the northwest. So a cloudy end to the day for much of eastern Scotland and northern England as that rain continues to sink its way southwards overnight. So quite a cloudy picture quite across the board into the early hours of Monday morning. But southeastern parts of England still holding on to some clearer skies and we could even see some frost here although not quite as cold under all that cloud and rain and particularly across parts of Scotland holding up into the high single figures. So a cloudier start for many of us on Monday particularly compared to what we saw over the weekend and this rain continues to spread its way southwards through Monday daytime not turning particularly heavy but definitely a grey and damp day compared to the recent couple of days. Northern parts of Scotland probably seeing the best of the sunshine through the afternoon. I'm feeling warm here with highs of 14 or 15 degrees, but definitely feeling much chillier across much of England and Wales under all that cloud and rain. That cloud and rain does eventually clear its way towards the southeast to start on Tuesday. So there will be some brighter spells, particularly for the northern half of the UK. Plenty of sunshine around through the morning. One or two showers bubbling up through the afternoon, particularly along some North Sea coastal regions and staying quite cloudy in the southeast through the afternoon. Further showers on their way through Wednesday and Thursday, but hints of low pressure returning as we head towards the second half of the week. Looks like things are heating up. Boxed boilers, sponsors of weather on GB News.
With thanks to Variety Cruises, a family company sailing since 1942, you have the chance to win a £10,000 seven-night small boat cruise for two. With flights, meals, excursions and drinks included, you'll be able to choose from any one of their 2025 Greek adventures and explore Greece like never before. Plus, you'll also win £10,000 in tax-free cash to make your summer sizzle. And we'll pack you off with these luxury travel gifts. For another chance to win a prize worth over £20,000, text PRIZE to 63232. Text costs £2 plus one standard network rate message. Or post your name and number to GB04 PO Box 8690 Derby DE1 9 T. UK only. Entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close at 5pm on the 26th of April. Full terms and privacy notice at gbnews.com forward slash win. Please check the closing time if listening or watching on demand. Good luck. 2024, a battleground year. The year the nation decides. As the parties gear up their campaigns for the next general election. Who will be left standing when the British people make one of the biggest decisions of their lives? Who will rise? And who will fall? Let's find out together. For every moment, the highs, the lows, the twists and turns. We'll be with you for every step of this journey. In 2024, GB News is Britain's election channel. I'm Michelle Jubry, and I'm not here to tell you what to think. 